It might surprise some people, but some of us actually read during our spare time. Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Ulysses, and today we're going to be doing a book review. So we've gathered up a pretty big collection of like a whole ton of DID books, and we basically bought out the entire DID section in uh, two or three bookstores around our area. <laughs> That's something we pride ourselves on a little bit. We have a pretty big collection of books and resources and things like that. And it's taken us quite a while to collect it and quite a while to read some of these books. This one today is When Rabbit Howls. It's a biography about Trudy Chase, who has 92 altars, and it's taken us about four years to get through this book. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's pretty triggering, pretty dark at some points, but altogether it's an amazing book. It takes place kind of in like the 70s, 80s, vaguely, when they still call it uh, multiple personality disorder, and Trudy Chase is one of the first documented cases that her therapist has seen. And so this book kind of describes her journey with DID from figuring out that she has alters to learning to coexist with them to unearthing memories and kind of putting her life back together. It made us dissociate so much to read this book because most of it is describing extreme heavy dissociation, like the, the whole thing is basically that. And it was really interesting to see like how other systems work so vividly described. Throughout her journey with her therapist and meeting other patients, she actually encounters a couple of other people who also have DID, one who is integrated and one who's just starting to figure things out. And it's really cool to see like a whole kind of miniature little spectrum there and to see them all together in one book is really good. This book is altogether um, way too relatable. <laughs> Not so much in some of the uh, life aspects because Trudy in this book is about I think 40 something and she has like a kid and an ex-husband and her own house and a business that one of her alters runs and just this whole life that she barely knows about, even though it's technically her own. It turns out that the woman is an altar herself, of course, because everyone in a system is an altar, but she's really kind of a facade that other altars speak through, and she had no idea. Now, since it's, it's pretty old, this is, it was made in, oh my gosh, when was this book made? Since this book was published in 1987, it's pretty outdated, like I mentioned. They do say multiple personality disorder a lot, but they do refer to people with DID as multiples, and I think I've seen the word system used a few times. They really refer to them as a collective in this. Uh, their system name is The Troops, and it's really, that's kind of badass. That's a really cool system name. But on the back, it does mention that, um, like Sybil, this is a spellbinding journey, and I have strong opinions about Sybil, but we recently bought that book as well, along with Sybil Exposed, so we're going to have kind of a little versus video about those two, and I'm really excited for that. I'm excited to like actually start reading, because this thing was kind of a roadblock for us. We started it um, freshman year in college, and we are a senior now, and we just finished this um, last week. <laughs> So I'm very excited that we finally got through this and now we have more room to read more finally because we only were able to take this like a few pages or a chapter or two at a time and there is 36 chapters and 367 pages, 366 pages not including the epilogue. We're very bad at reading epilogues. So this was a little bit dense. Like, if you look at it here, the copy that we have has this really dense text, and for us, that's just a problem. We don't read those books very well. We like big text because not everybody wears the glasses, and dissociation is a pain with the tiny text because sometimes we find ourselves reading the same line, like, over and over again, or skipping a paragraph by accident, or just rereading a same paragraph for, like, five minutes, and then realizing what we're doing, so... Small text is not an ideal for us, but 
We powered through it because the story was just so captivating for this book. It was so good. <laughs> I don't want to give away a lot of what goes on in here because some people out there might want to read it as well. So I'll just keep it a little bit vague and to end my lovely rant about this book, I'm just going to read the back portion here so you guys can take your own judgments and see if you want to find it for yourself. This book, we got it at uh, Powell's, which is, I'm not sure if there are Powell's in other places beside Oregon, but it's a very big used book chain, and there's uh, one in Portland that's three or four floors, and it's basically just a massive, gigantic building just full of books, and I love it so much. So here is the back paragraphs. Startling, stunning, powerful, from the San Francisco Chronicle. Black Catherine is the willful guardian of the children. Sewermouth voices rage in a torrent of four-letter words. Twelve is a sensitive, artistic child. Rabbit doesn't speak, but only howls in pain. These are some of the personalities that live within Trudy Chase. For her entire life, they have protected her from the memories of unspeakable acts of child abuse and incest that she endured for years. To escape the horror of the violent abuse, the two-year-old child went to sleep and created the inner world of the troops, the 92 voices that shielded her from the pain, but that she never fully knew existed as she established her career, got married, and started a family. Only now has Trudy Chase unlocked the door to the terrifying crimes of the past. Like Sybil, this is a spellbinding journey through the fragmented world of the multiple personality, but unlike anything you've ever read, this unique book has over 90 authors. For all of Trudy Chase's troops speak out to tell her story, all but one when rabbit howls. So um, I would definitely say a massive trigger warning on this for uh, sexual abuse because they do get kind of descriptive with that stuff and that was pretty triggering. And this is actually the book that inspired Parsifal to start digging for our trauma memories and unearth some really horrendous stuff. So read this when you're in a good place, a good state of mind. Uh, take care of yourself when reading. Definitely practice self-care if you decide to tackle a book like this. And good luck with reading, and stay tuned if you'd like to hear some more book reviews. I can't promise that they'll be very soon. <laughs> Our life is, like, pretty busy, so I don't always have a lot of time to read, but I do my best. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video. We added a new painting here. I think we're gonna start changing up art in the backgrounds once things get kinda tired or when we make something really awesome. So this is gonna be our little gallery space. Enjoy.